Welcome. We're, we're glad to know that you're still there. It's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines are. And then we'll just quickly take that and see what Nigerians also are saying. Yes, we begin with Friday leadership uh, from the leadership newspaper. And it leads with no going back on fuel subsidy removal and MPCL declares. You have details of that on page four. The riders there says no backup cash for subsidy payment in June. CSOs condemn abrupt removal. President has ordered palliatives to cushion effects. That's Kiari. Then another headline there says, Tinubu orders security chiefs to deal with oil thieves. IGP promotes 31,465 inspectors, others. Details of that is on page 14. Yeah, Kasai, Oshoba, Ebute intervene in 10th National Assembly leadership tussle. And Npan mourns that communication founder, Raymond Dopasi. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the leadership newspaper. Okay, the next uh, newspaper is Nature News. Nature News leads with petrol price will come down, according to Kiari. Uh, we have other uh, news headlines there. Uh, water scarcity. Kanu governor declares state of emergency, orders water board to present demands. What we want President Tinubu to do in four years, that's uh, C-A-P-P-A. -P you can read that on page five. Nigeria needs strong laws enforcement to protect endangered species, as according to WAF, uh, page five also. OMEV rejects Egypt's agro-processing investment in Ogun State. You can find that on page three. Uh, those were the headlines, or those are the headlines we're ready to take from Nature News this morning. So from Nature News, we move to the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian newspaper, the lead headline there, 11 years after Occupy Nigeria, Tinubuto's painful path to economic rebirth. It is a big story of the Guardian newspaper. And it's inside uh, pages four and five. Petrol subsidy removal, NLC debunks strike action on Vail's position today after consultations. Tinubu meets intelligence, security chiefs, gives mandate to tackle insecurity. Nigeria's business conditions, confidence in economy level hit five months high. And then right at the mass trip, you have Enugu court remand 52 pro Biafran agitators in prison. Well, that's it for the Guardian newspaper. And we'll take a final newspaper, which is uh, Business Day. Business Day leads with petrol to sell between 478 and 600 naira per liter as subsidy goes. Uh, we also have other stories here on Business Day. Um, Nigeria Air gulps eight, 85 billion naira in eight years, yet airport infrastructure suffers. Nigeria Air gulps 85 billion naira in eight years. Banking agents rise 41 on, uh, on new mobile money license. A co bridge, one more month of suffering as federal government deters. Okay, uh, those were headlines on business day um, that we are going to bring to you today. Okay, so we have been joined by our analyst, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, a legal practitioner, to take a look at some of these headlines. Good morning, Mr. Kolawale. Good morning, my sister. Thank you for inviting me. So good to have you join us. Thank you. So let's go straight to the headline on, on the leadership. 
The lead headline here, no going back on fuel subsidy removal, NNPCL declares. What's your take on this? Can they repeat that? Can they repeat that? It's unquote. Okay, no going back on fuel subsidy removal, NNPCL declares. What? That's a very interesting one. Like we said uh, during the week, I think last Wednesday, MNPC is supposed to be a limited liability company, now set up to do business in the area of petroleum products, just like any other company would do, and make profits for government. Being a limited liability company, MNPC cannot begin to formulate policies, programs, give rules, and dictate what happens in the petroleum sector. That would be antithetical or a negation of the reason why they are set up. But the truth of the matter is that uh, nothing is ever clear cut in Nigeria. Why we want to run an entity as a limited liability company, sometimes the government will still want to shadow them with the responsibilities of a policy making uh, organization, which to me smacks of a confusion and lack of understanding of what we really want to achieve or the goal we want to pursue in the petroleum uh, sector. Uh, it should be the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and maybe the presidency that should be saying the kind of thing that MNPC is saying uh, uh, and not the other way uh, around. But sometimes you find out that the people in government want to shift the blame. They want to push some of these things to other places, to other people, in order not to be seen as the one running draconian policies and ashes than the neck or the throat of our people. It would have been better for the government to stand up to its programs and policies rather than starting pushing some of these responsibilities. The responsibility of the hallmark of a good government is that they will formulate good policies, stand by it, push it, and ensure that they achieve success with it, no matter, no matter how bitter the policies are. It is not all policies that will be sweet. Some will be bitter, some will be sweet, but in between. So, I don't understand why the NNPC should be one. Uh, calling uh, the, the beat with regard to policy of uh, subsidy removal. Now, what do you make of how the president um, removed uh, that inaugural declaration on fuel subsidy? How, how, how did it hit you, and how do you respond to it? The presidency's policy, I mean, a statement? Hello, hello? Yeah. Okay, you Can watched the inaugural... To... Repeat what you said. Repeat. Yes. How did you respond to the inaugural declaration on subsidy on uh, May 29th by President uh, Tinubu when you first watched it that well, morning? That is also part of the confusion that we've been seeing in that area. I read the President's uh, speech. Here he said that the uh, petroleum subsidy is gone and gone forever. But shortly after that, we still saw or found some of the presidential spokespersons and landlords saying that um, it was not the president that we, uh, uh, the subsidy that it was our current president, President Mamadi Buhari, by way of signing into law the Petroleum and Reform Act, which uh, was signed. I think three days before the president, the former president, left office. So, like I said, the message I'm getting from some of these things is that uh, nobody really wants to stick out his neck or want to be seen to be responsible for the so-called removal of the problem uh, uh, subsidy. And I don't know whether in your own world of Andrew, you saw what Tongozi, Ngo, Okonde, Uwala, Ngo, Okonde, Uwala, 
check with response, with response to petroleum and subsidies. Hmm. He said when he was minister of uh, finance, uh, the petroleum uh, importers brought a deal of about 8 billion or something, or even a trillion, to be paid for a subsidy. And there in the wisdom, said that uh, what they were asking for was too high. And so he, he consulted with the president, I think it was Dr. Gillard, and that was there about the end of And then they decided to audit the bill that the petroleum importers uh, brought. And then when they audited it, I think they said they found that 2.5 billion out of the bill that they submitted yeah, dollars. were actually point, not two, two worth something billion the dollars. to the country. Yes. You see? And that uh, when they decided not to pay, the petroleum importer started putting pressure on, on them to pay the, 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 the money. And uh, when they were not bought, they went and kidnapped our mother, Professor Wan, well, a retired professor of sociology, that they were going to kill her. But she still insisted that they were not going to pay. And uh, the president backed her up, uh, but they, she had to pay with the kidnapping of her mother, which could have um, led to the death of that woman. What Dr. Okonde was telling the world that uh, during the speech he gave us in West America, is that petroleum subsidy in Nigeria is more or less a scam that has been used to dupe not just the government, but the entire Nigerian people. Well, we also have um, another story. Uh, I know we've been talking about subsidy removal and all that, and we know also what uh, the president said when it was Jonathan's time and he was trying to remove subsidy and all that. But we've heard the story. Maybe it's gladdening or is nothing to be glad about. Nigeria's business conditions and confidence in economy level hit five-month high. Do you believe that report or not? That Nigeria's business conditions and confidence in the economy level hit five month high. That means the confidence and the conditions of doing business are very, very high at this time. It's a report on uh, uh, the Guardian. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Yeah. Uh, before I address that, let me quickly go back a little bit on this particular consideration. You were uh, reminding us of what. Uh, President said, you will recollect that during the era of the Dr. Rulon Jonathan, uh, the present president was one of those who said uh, uh, it was uh, very unconscionable for Dr. Rulon Jonathan to have removed or to have attempted to remove the petroleum subsidy. But it was a cannot thing to do and, and what happened. That in fact, uh, there, 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 there is no subsidy anywhere. So, but unfortunately, <laughs> the man who said that He's not the president, and he's also now in Tambasan. Oh, he has said, I mean, he has removed the so-called uh, uh, thing that he described as a phantom uh, of subsidy. You're that making is reference to... That. And that lends credence to what Dr. Okonde Iwala is saying, that there is confusion in the petroleum sector. Now, with regards to the confidence in the economy, I want to say that is not unexpected. Uh, when you look at the present president, he is an economist, he's an accountant. He, he successfully ran a government uh, uh, in Lagos. And he also has a, a kind of a track record of being able to assemble some of the best brains to really assist him to run a uh, uh, government. Those may be some, some of the indicators that the business community has seen as a kind of um, uh, yield the confidence in the Nigerian economy. When you take the degree is uh, successes in Lagos and the qualifications is uh, once been a treasurer, I think, in the total of most and what happened. Uh, you tend to believe that it makes you better with the running of the government than the state and the previous uh, uh, government where you neither solve uh, the kind of technocrats that uh, the present president was able to assemble in Lagos. He also saw some lethargy 
uh, the lack of a business-like uh, approach to government uh, during the era of President uh, Ebuari. So the two characters, the two people, are totally different people. I think one is more street, one is more business-like, one is more exposed in terms of running government, in terms of running business, in terms of um, understanding of the dynamics of uh, the economy. Whereas the other one was laid back, reticent, and was never in a hurry to achieve uh, or to do any, to, to conduct government business. All right. Let's go to business day. The lead headline there says, as subsidy goes, Nigerians demand cut in governance costs. The Nigerians are demanding cut in government uh, costs. Costs, are they? Yeah, costs. Yes, that's what we have always said on this program. But those are some of the things that I have always emphasized. Honestly speaking, we will not believe that when some people or when most people voted for President Buhari, uh, in 2015 and 2019, their belief was that being a prudent person, they will look at the cost of governance in the country and try to reduce it. I'll give you an example. A lot of people have advocated for a camera legislation, so that you need to mark both the Senate and the House of Representatives and reduce the number of people that will prepare. A lot of people have also conversed that uh, there is nothing wrong in having legislation in the and the local government to be just any sitting allowance to be a part time affair. But lo and behold, that was not done. When you also look at the cost of contracts in this country, you compare to what is happening in some other parts of the world, you find out that there is no prudence in the cost of uh, contract. I once gave an example, it came from Dr. Willard in it, where he said that uh, he went to one country, I think it was South Africa, and he was asking them, how much is content to be the airport? And they told him. And he compared that to a renovation of uh, airport in India. It, it was higher than what the uh, country had been to build a whole airport from the scratch. That is what. We also look at uh, all the contracts in Nigeria today are uh, basically dollar denominated. They now come in billions and trillions and millions. And you ask yourself, what are the things that go into execution of this uh, contract? Take, for example, road construction. When you are constructing roads in Nigeria, it's not only the bitumen that you have to import, and maybe a part of the iron road. The time that you use the granite, that the cement that you use, and all that will come from Nigeria. So, why would the cost of road construction still be that high in Nigeria? And also look at the salaries and allowances in the minimum. Look at the civilian package that uh, the people just left government are working on it. Look at the amount of cars they put in there and uh, when they are moving around. Some a minister will go in the convoy of about 20, 30 cars. The president, the presidential fleet, I think they say, there are not less than five or seven aircraft in there. When in Russia, in this, there are so many presidents around the world, so many prime ministers who don't have private jets. They use the airlines of their respective countries to commit around it. So, it is among us. And except we do something about the cost of governance in this country, I am not too sure we need to sustain this democracy. I'm not sure there is anything left for us to develop the country, to provide infrastructure, to provide jobs for people, to solve the, not, I mean, the, the problem in the electricity sector. This has remained intractable for more than 60 years. Let's find the humongous amount of money that has been thrown into that sector. Um, let's, um, what do you feel about what is happening in the aviation sector, especially as it concerns Nigeria Air? The data shown by NBS and also from uh, the budgetary allocations, compiling them together uh, in the past eight years, puts the budget for Nigeria Air or this expenditure on the Nigeria Air at 85 billion Naira. Would like to get your <laughs> comments on that. You know, I want that to know I am. Nigeria is a very unique country in so many respects. 
you have a near line that doesn't decline, and then you are spending billions of naira to maintain it. Uh, I'll give you one thing. Somebody posted on Facebook on the social media that the logo of the so-called Nigerian uh, Air, which they just brought, cost about four hundred thousand dollars to design. And uh, that logo is not a mere eagle, a green eagle, that was emblazoned on the on the aircraft. If you give that to a Nigerian Nazis, I'm not too sure that you can mean that they will do it <laughs> for up to fifty thousand dollars. The Nigerian spent about four hundred thousand dollars to design to put a eagle on the near aircraft. Well, like most people have said, uh, Running an airline is a contradiction in itself. Government have said that uh, they have made business, only private businesses. And it was based on that that the Nigerian Airway was uh, sold to some private concern. And that was also the reason why so many government businesses were privatized and sold out. So if you said that government has made business, only business, why are you going back on your own? Why are you going back to your vomit? It really doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction in terms. And then when you look at um, the basic infrastructure of them, you are those basic infrastructure enough to support uh, the floating of the Nigerian sky, which we have simply done. We don't have an aircraft in Nigeria. The British of fuel in the whole West African region, Nigeria is the highest. Also, look at all the target airlines. There are none of them, I'm sorry to say, all the private airlines in Nigeria, none of them is doing well. So, when you look at that area, why don't you first find solutions to why airlines are not doing well before you begin to float or go back to your permit with regard to running an airway? Also remember yeah, Mr. that the airlines that are in Nigeria are complaining Mr. that they cannot repartate their profit outside the country. Yeah, Mr. Kalawale. Okay? Yep. So, uh, well, thank you so much. That would be a good place to leave it. Uh, time will not permit us to continue with all the prices. It's already uh, time for us to wrap it up. But thank you so much for your time. And that, that, uh, that information you tried to put out regarding the cost for the logo of Nigeria Air, um, he was accused of having used $600,000, and he debunked it and said he used 50.8 million naira to design the logo. So I guess, that should, yeah, I guess that should make us happier. But thank you so much, Mr. That is also Mungo. <laughs> it's supposed to make you happier. to design it for about 300,000 naira. It's supposed to make you happier, Mr. Tunde Kalawale. So please be happy. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Mr. Tunde Kalawale, a legal <laughs> practitioner, has joined us on Off the Press to analyze headlines. Thank you for some, having me. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> So we'll be taking a break. I'll come back to take a look at the hot topic of the day. Stay with us.